Welcome and welcome back. Kendall here with Minos for Pros and Joes, helping you simplify the renovation and remodeling process. On this channel, we do hands-on product tooling gear reviews, as well as renovation tip and strategy videos. So if you're interested in renovations, repairs, remodeling, or upgrades to real estate and property, consider subscribing. Also, leave us a comment and hit that like button. It really helps to show engagement on the videos and ultimately helps with the growth of this channel. So now that we've got that out of the way, in our last installment, I was in this master bathroom and we went through the process of preparing the walls and the floors and everything in the room essentially to paint. In that video, we used an airless sprayer to paint the entire ceiling of this space, which was a little bit different than the norm because of the height of the ceilings as well as the space of the room. And so now you can see that the entire space has been sprayed and we are moving on to painting the walls. So here is the tall ladder that I referenced in the previous video. This is actually a 12 foot step ladder and the height of the ceilings in this space is right around 13 and a half feet. And so as you see me going up and down, you can see that there's very little space in there for me to move around. To add to the difficulty of maneuvering around in this space, the room is only about 11 feet wide. And so when you've got the feet of the ladder spread out, it leaves very little room to move around. And with the pitch of the vaulted ceilings, you can see that when I stand up higher on the ladder, there's less and less head clearance to be able to move around. And so that's part of the reason why I'm kind of up and down, up and down, up and down. I'm going to have to load up my paint tray on a frequent basis because as you can see, I don't have anywhere to rest it while I'm working. So I'm trying to put a little bit of paint in here each time I go up the ladder so that I have enough to work with, but not enough to make the tray lopsided or to make a huge mess in the event that I knock the tray over or something like that. So now you can see I'm actually also getting my nine inch roller prepared to start rolling with that. So initially I was just cutting in with my angle sash brush and now I'm gonna be going back up to do some additional work with that nine inch roller. I was also using a four inch roller as I worked out those brush strokes as well. So now you can see I've got it going and I'm rocking and rolling. Essentially the process that I'm going through for painting this wall is exactly the same as it would be as if this was a regular ceiling and wall situation. I'm just slightly varying the way that I attack the space. And so I'm still having to cut in and I'm still having to work everything out. Just a lot tighter space to have to work within and having to get familiar with this ladder. So this is a rental ladder and I'm having to learn the minor nuances of this particular ladder. Every ladder is different. And if you've got ladder experience, then you know that every time you get on a ladder, you have to develop a level of trust in that ladder before you can really begin to work freely and focus 100% on your work and not be constantly concerned with foot placement as well as where you are on the ladder. So I'm having to go through that constantly as I'm working on this ladder because as I said, this is my first time using it and it is a 12 foot ladder and it is a painter's ladder. And so the difference between this ladder and the standard type of ladder that you'll see me use later on in the video is that this ladder is made out of aluminum, which means that it's very, very lightweight, which makes it easier to handle when you're trying to maneuver it around as a single person working on a job site and things like that. The flip side is that it is a lot more flimsy and less robust or stout than a fiberglass ladder. This ladder, I'm not sure how much it weighs. I would guess that this ladder weighs somewhere in the range of 50 to 60 pounds. However, the fiberglass ladder weighed 170 to 180 pounds. That was an absolute no-go. So I'm working it out with the painter's ladder and just being very careful. So now you can see I'm standing under the, the ladder and we're about to start the ladder two-step here. And so I've got to push in those locks there for the legs and just slowly maneuver it around and try to fold it in. Now, if you remember when I panned up earlier, you can see that the central or centermost point in this room is the highest, but the walls are angled at a very steep angle. And so I have to keep the ladder straight up and in the center of the room to keep from hitting any parts of the ceiling. And I'm also having to avoid the rough plumbing that's coming through the floor as well as the shower pan over here on this left side which is what i'm doing now so now i've got my paint and everything going again kind of changed locations now 
So as you can see, I've knocked out half of that high portion of this wall and we're just going over here to the other side to do the exact same thing. So as I've got my paint tray there, you can see that there in the orange, I'm so close to the wall that I can actually lean against the other wall with my arm and cut in. And so one of the things about doing this is it's important when you're painting to be able to be steady on your feet so that you can maintain a steady angle and a steady line with your brush. And so that's part of the reason why I'm standing there with my arm on the wall is just to steady myself so that I can pull a straight cut in line. And so in my orange paint tray, I've actually got the brush I've got the baby roller, which I'm working there right now. And then I've also got the nine inch roller, which is the general purpose roller. And so I'm first I'm going through and I'm cutting in with my ankle sash brush. Then I'm kind of back rolling that area with the small roller. And then I'm attacking with the large roller to roll out the larger spaces. So now I'm all the way up here at the top and you can kind of see how high I am. So the top of that tile shower enclosure is about seven feet tall. So you can see that the bottom of my feet is seven feet off the floor and I am right at six feet. That makes it 13 feet, which means there would be less than six inches between the top of my head and the ceiling at the highest point in the room. Everywhere else is gonna be lower than that. And so here I am again using that arm prop method so that I can make sure that I'm able to cut in properly. The other thing about working on a ladder like this is that you also have to just make sure that you are focused on what you're doing. As I said earlier, you want to be focused on the application of paint, but you also want to be cognizant and aware of how you're standing and where you're positioned and your body weight on this ladder at all times. And it's even more imperative when you're on a ladder that's this high off of the ground because there's essentially nothing for you to grab onto to prevent or break your fall. So you're gonna go all the way down to the floor. Now the funny thing about this space is this ladder is so tall that it actually can't fall all the way over on its side. It can fall over enough to dump me off on the floor, but the ladder actually can't lay down sideways because this space is only about 11 feet wide. And as I said before, this ladder is 12 feet tall. And so there's some other little things and obstacles in the room that would also prevent it from completely just leaning over. But once again, that's not really going to affect the, the safety on the ladder. The ladder's got to be standing up straight for the user to be able to be safe and using it in the proper way. So now I'm going back over everything with that nine inch roller and I'm just kind of knocking everything out. As you can see here, the nine inch roller covers a lot more space than the little mini roller or the little shorty, but the short roller allows you to get closer and have more control because it's so much smaller. You don't have to worry as much about getting roller paint onto the wall next to it that you're trying to stay off of. You're staying off of your cut in line and it worked a lot better to be able to control it. And so I'm coming back down here again. Look at that, I've got my supplies in there like I'm painting the Sistine Chapel. So in any case, you can see that the new color is quite a bit lighter and more neutral than the old color. I would say that the new color is like a 2019, 2020 color and the existing color in that space is more like a late 90s, early 2000s color. So these are both very popular colors for the time period. It's awesome to be able to go into a space like this and just go ahead and paint without having to do a ton of repair work. People don't realize it, but when you have to go into a space that has a lot of dust and grime on the walls and things like that, all those things take time to be able to go in and clean up and prepare the space so that you can begin to paint so that you can ensure that your finished product looks as good as it possibly can. And so now I'm going over this area above this window with the small ruler, doing the same thing I did earlier, just kind of tightening everything up. Now, I always paint with two coats of paint, regardless with the type of paint that I'm using, and I'm using a very good paint here today on this project. However, just one coat just really is, is never gonna be enough to give you the appropriate coverage. So here I am up close and personal, I'm going, to show you how I'm gonna cut in down here off of this baseboard. So as you can see here, I've got my painter's paper down here along with my frog tape. The frog tape 
is one of the better tapes you can use for masking during paint application. It really helps to lock out the paint. And so as you can see here, I've got the frog tape and the paper combined and I've got them applied at the bottom right over the edge of that baseboard. And what that allows me to do is run my brush back and forth as you just saw me do just a moment ago, right along that baseboard line. And I have the security of knowing that my paint is not going to leak through and get behind that tape and mess up my trim line. And so now that I've got that knocked out, I'm going ahead, I'm working with my nine inch roller. I'm going over this section of the wall here. Remember, this is right in the area where we did the drywall repair. So if you've seen the earlier videos, this part of the wall was opened up and I was fighting with that green piece of drywall board right here, uh, putting screws in and everything else to make sure that everything worked out right. So this is that exact same area. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check that one out. I've got a link to that one in the description box below as well. So as I said, this is the first coat. And the main thing that I wanna do when I'm applying my first coat is to just make sure that I get familiar with the walls in general. And I wanna make sure that I get a good coat on everything. So that way, when I come back through on my second coat, it will go much faster and I'll know about any type of problem areas and things like that I need to be careful of as I'm working. So I'm up here on top of this a little recessed area. It's really dusty up there on that ledge. And so because it's not finished up there, we're not going to be trying to turn around and paint it. It's just a huge dust trap up there and it was never painted when this house was built. And so we're not going to fool with it today. I'm going to show you up there here in a little bit so you can see exactly what it looks like and you'll have a better idea why we're not going to paint it. It's not going to make a difference because none of it's visible. So I'm cutting in over here in this tight little corner. I think on this entire project, I have to move this ladder approximately four times doing the ladder dance. And so I'm just gradually working up here and I'm just gradually cutting in. The first thing I'm doing right here is working with that brush. Working with a paintbrush is one of the things that takes practice. So when you watch these videos and you see me doing this type of work, please understand that I am guilty of making some things look easier than they are. And so paint is one of those things that falls into that category. If you're watching me paint, it looks like it's very, very easy, but I do have a lot of experience with painting. And so painting is one of those things that you can watch someone else do 10,000 times, but until you actually put in the time, you're not going to be able to develop the high level of skills that you want to be able to just burn through the paint because essentially painting is all about process and so once you know how you're going to attack a particular room or solve a particular problem in a space then it's just about execution and so as long as you can transfer those steps in the process from your mind through your body which is typically going to be your your hands and shoulders and things like that with regards to applying the paint to the wall um, you should be good to go. And so as I was saying before, this is essentially the same process that I would be using if I were doing a regular room. So instead of using a six foot step ladder, I'm using a 12 foot step ladder. I'm having to do a lot more with regards to positioning the ladder and I'm having to be a lot more careful with how I work on this ladder because it's so tall. And I'm also having to take a few more steps with regards to moving around my supplies. As you can see there, I've got my paint tray turned uh, lengthwise and you can see that that ledge up there is not actually deep enough for that tray to have a complete floor to sit on so I'm having to be very careful with that and so I'm just kind of working along here and I'm cutting in the bottom portion of this here now getting close to the area that's kind of dusty when you're painting you want to make sure that you don't get dust on your brush and if you do you want to stop and clean that off because that's just going to continue to create buildup and it's going to affect the way that your paint job looks when you finish because you're going to get gunk and dirt and stuff all in your brush which is going to be all over your work which will affect the way that it looks ultimately so i'm just kind of trying to get as much of this done as possible check this out here you're going to see here a moment you're going to see me take a step or two down and i believe it may have happened already but there's at one point in this video where i take a step and you can literally see the ladder kind of jump. <laughs> uh, you may have to rewind back to see it. You'll hear me make a little noise, but the ladder actually slides a little bit. I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary on it, but you can see the ladder just kind of like lurch forward and you can see me or hear me make a noise 
These are the type of things that you got to be careful for when you're working on these ladders. And the taller it is, the more careful you've got to be. And so I'm continuing to work around here, getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. Now, as you see in painting this room, I started off with doing the tall walls first. And there's a very good reason for that because I'm going to have to use a completely different process to knock out these short walls. So now I've got you up here on the ladder, let you see what it looks like up here. It's pretty high up here. There's that area there that's just complete dust trap that we're going to be avoiding painting on this, but going to paint everything down to it. And you can see how tall this ladder is. There's the AC register, and we can look down and see our sinks and countertops and old light fixtures. Stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to show you how to paint those short walls, and we're actually going to be painting with lasers. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.